Welcome. In the previous tutorial we talked about how to move around points, edges and polygons by hand and now I would like to introduce you to the modeling tools in Cinema 4D. First of all we use a cube so we have something we can use our tools on and if I just go to mode project I can turn the color to 80% gray and I use display Goro shading lines to actually see the topology of my model. If you want to model on a given geometry you should make sure that this object is editable. Whenever you created one of those objects here coming from Cinema 4D you have to make sure to convert those objects by clicking either C or by clicking on this icon here to make the object editable. Once you did that, you can choose, or rather you have to choose, a mode like point, edge or polygon mode. After you've done so, you have to click using that live selection tool or another selection tool on those um, polygons or edges or the points. And depending on what mode you've chosen, your tools will change. So there are some tools that work with polygons, some others will only work with points for example. But how do you access those tools? As far as I know there are around about four or five ways to access those modeling tools. The most common one or the yeah is that guy over here you just use the top bar and you can go to mesh and there are quite a few tools up here distributed over those menu entries like creating tools transforming tools and so on. And whenever there are some grayish actions they are not working in that given mode. I will just show you an example like there is extrude inner. We click on that and then we can see our mouse icon changed. There is a little icon. The white color is showing the uh, recent state and the orange uh, color shows what it's going, uh, going to happen when you use that tool. And there's basically two ways of using those tools. First is just by doing it freehand, pressing the left mouse button, uh, holding it and dragging it to the right or to the left. You can change that geometry. After you've done so, the action doesn't have to be finished. You can still change what you've done by going to the Attribute Manager here and changing some values. If you press Enter here, you can try quite a few different values. And you should, while you're learning, you should go, go through all those actions and see what they do. For example, subdivisions are changing the number of polygons here. And that's one way of modeling. I will do another step just to show you. We go to mesh, creating tools, and there, there is extrude. I use the left mouse button again, drag to the right hand side and there you go, we have created something new out of a box or a cube. So the first thing when modeling is you should think about what's the easiest or the base geometry that matches the closest to what you want to create.
So in some cases this might be some something uh, as simple as a polygon. Then I would go to the model mode, go to move tool and then I get like those orange points so I can create a base shape. Then I convert this object, go to um, a, a mode like edge mode, select ring selection and after I've done my selections I can use a tool like mesh creating tools and use the edge cut. Then I hold down the left mouse button, drag it to the right and then I can interactively change the number of cuts. They are green now. Green means that we are creating N-Gons so they are not actually cut it through here but that's what I want so I remove that tick among create angons and that way I have a base shape then I could switch over to point mode for example change a few points use the scale mode if you like And then you switch over to selection mode, go to maybe polygon mode, and so on. Then you can do whatever you like with that. Of course, um, using those tools, or rather the way of how to pick those tools is um, very um, taking a long time because you have to think about that you, you need loads of modeling operations to get a model done and always using a selection mode up here like ring selection and then going in here like mesh creating tools and I use edge cut again is really tedious so I would like to show you some other ways of selecting tools. I use a cube again, convert it, and there is another mode, um, or rather another way of getting those tools, which is just um, pressing U. These are mostly, well not always, but uh, mostly selection tools and a few other operations and it works like that you put your mouse somewhere and you don't move it then you press U and you should make sure that you don't move the mouse after you've done so so once you move the mouse like I just did this little uh, sheet or this little um, yeah sheet gets uh, faded out so just press U have a look what you need like I would like to choose loop selection so I press L afterwards now I can move the mouse again and there you go we have done a loop selection a loop around the cube if you want something else you go to U again have a look for the next operation like um, I could do invert UI so I press I now and once you know those commands by heart, you can type them really quick. For example, if I want to invert my selection again, I can just press UI. And if you're really quick, then you just go UI. And you hardly see that, but you can work pretty quickly. But these here, the U keys, are, as I said, mostly uh, simple selection operations. So if you want to actually alter or manipulate your geometry you have to press M and here you find quite a few um, modeling commands like if I go to let's pick T then we can extrude from here if I go to M again I can use whatever I like 
for example extrude inner which is W hold down the left mouse key and drag again now I can go to M T for extruding again and use inwards so with these shortcuts you're pretty quick at modeling that would be one way of course there's more um, menus like the V menu it used to have uh, a lot more um, modeling tools here um, but we still can choose or switch between modes we have all those selection tools in here and I think I've done a tutorial which shows how to change menus so if you want to integrate the modeling tools in here again you should know how to do that otherwise I will show you okay there's another way um, of um, choosing those tools you can go to a special layout for modeling which is just called modeling and you can here see at the bottom bar that there are the selection tools up here and the modeling tools right below and depending on what mode you you choose you get different kind of modeling tools here so just to show you the workflow I've chosen my life selection the polygons click here then I use extrude inner I extrude inner by dragging my left click mouse I use a certain value here and once I go to the next command like extruding I can do the same again maybe increase the number of subdivisions here then I go to loop selection click here hold down shift to do another selection and then I go to extrude again and I drag the mouse to the right hand side I just want oh I want no subdivision and I increase the angle to 90% or more that way I get those nice platforms and I can still use my standard rotate tool for example to change that a little so that's the maybe more classical approach to modeling what I would like to show you what is uh, new in Cinema 4D 14 is a mode that works a little different I go back to standard layout for that but it should work in any mode anyway which is like that if you've chosen a polygon you can just hit shift C and now I can X type inner and it gets me extrude inner and I just have to press enter now and I got that command from the list let me do that again shift C and now I type extrude and I get all those options for extruding you can just use your arrow keys to switch between those um, different tools and the little icons here should give you an idea of what it's gonna doing and you should read that stuff in the brackets too because yeah depending uh, that shows you what kind of area this takes place or uh, what module it's using so this is just an extrusion I press enter and now I can extrude that quite nice just shift C I myself model um, rarely with shift Z and almost uh, never with the modeling layout but I just use all those shortcuts that are given um, I even used shortcuts for picking that guy and those icons here I put that on 7 and points 4, 5, 6 so then I'm really quick there is more than just that um, shortcuts M 
we're starting with M and U, but there's as well uh, stuff like I for extruding inwards, D for extruding outwards, if you like. And uh, the rest I just do with a combination of using my own shortcuts for selecting, like 5 for edges, then I use U, B for ring selection, hold down shift, now I have selected two rings, then I go to M, F, do the edge cut, go to 6, which is in my case the polygon mode, then I use UL for ring selection, and then I can use D again for extruding, and that's how you get really, really quick at modeling. So let's go through those modeling tools one by one. I first just delete that object I just created and I would like to show you the tools by the most simple shape we get, it's the polygon. So by pressing H I can see it all. And I convert that object so I can actually do something with it. And let's start by using the point mode. And again, we should switch over to modeling mode. That way we can see a little more. The first tool I would like to show you is called the knife. It's right here in the middle and the knife has loads of different modes but first of all it works like this. You can click on one point, hold down left mouse button, drag it over to another point and then you did a cut. I can also start at that point holding down left mouse button and end on a edge. And I can also start somewhere at the edge and release the mouse button at another edge. I can also start outside my geometry and just drag a knife cut right over that geometry. If you see that green line here, that means that we have a polygon, this one here, with more than four sides. If you don't want that, you have to click or remove create n-gons um, before you actually do that cut. Then it's just dividing uh, that um, polygon by itself. Okay. Let's go back. I just use command Z to remove the cuts I did. And there is another cut which is called hole. Hole works like that. You just cut inside that polygon. And Cinema 4D will remove that area and triangulate the surrounding area. I go back. Then there is plane mode which works like that. It's um, using that plane so it makes it possible to do um, our regular cuts. For example if you have a slope I just create a slope by picking one edge pulling it upwards and if you think about like you want to have straight cuts here then you can do so by going to knife, plane and we should use quite a number of cuts like here and you can change their distance by changing the spacing value to 5 for example 
and then you can get exactly that here. We shouldn't restrict it to selection. We'll do like this. And I could do a finer one right here. So in case you have a situation like this, I create a new polygon, convert it, and make this edge a little bigger. Just by selecting it, going to scale and hold, holding down the left mouse button somewhere here in the gray area, I can do like this. Select the next one and move it upwards. I can now use that knife and change the plane, for example, up here and use like 20 cuts. Starting from here with snapping, I have regular cuts. And if you want to have regular cuts all over the surface, you should first measure that edge below here by reading the X size, which is, I double click and press 200, so I have a straight value. And now if I take my knife again, I can do 20, um, 10 cuts with um, 20 unit space, so I will have absolutely uh, regular divided surface. In this case, I would have liked to use create angons, so I go back, activate creating angons, and click again. So that way I have regular cuts like that. Let's try the other direction using XY, and then I could just cut in here. So seen from top, this should look like a perfect grid, all square, using just squares. And I've done this on a um, non, on a um, polygon which is not lying flat in my scene. Quite useful. I delete that polygon just to recreate another one convert that and this time I would like to have a look at another way of cutting which is the loop cut. The loop cut is just cutting through my object but parallel to the border lines here. So for example if you have a, a more complex object like a cube this one here, I convert it. Then I can do a cut which goes around the whole object. Like here, like here. Let me just show you the menu. I can do some cuts. The path mode. would have to explore myself. I never use that one. Then there is a really interesting way of cutting which is called the edge cut. And the edge cut needs an edge selection first. So usually this would be a ring selection. I click here and I get all the edges in that direction around the cube. Then I go to the edge cut and let me just hit apply here because there's no need to exactly place that cut. I can do this later on by increasing the subdivisions for example or changing those values and that way I get new cuts which I can use for some more modeling. I really like using that, by the way. 
if you want to quickly access that function you just hit as you can read down here you just hit the letter K or the shortcut MK so with K you really have a knife at your hand quickly but you have to make sure you're in the right mode here which is probably mostly the line mode and you can cut through here okay if you want to get a quick access to the ring selection you would go UB that way you get them and right after that you, you need MF and when you drag your mouse like you hold down the left key and drag it to the right you can increase the number of cuts and to the left you can decrease it so that way you could quickly build a skyscraper or something yep what other tools do we have? I go over to polygon, convert it again and let's just go through okay that's kind of obvious um, once you created a hole like um, for example with the hole knife tool you could close it again by using closed polygon holes one click and it's closed again the shortcut is MD and might be useful sometimes uh, brush and magnet are good for more um, like um, vague things for example you could subdivide this polygon quite a few times by just going to polygon mode and clicking on here and the quickest way to subdivide stuff is pressing U and then S. I mostly memorize those um, shortcuts by um, kind of um, helping me out with uh, other shortcuts like US for United States is a quick way of subdividing things. If you press it several times US then you get more subdivisions. If you want to do several subdivisions at once, you can press, I just go back, and you can press U Shift S, and then you get that little window here where you can select the number of subdivisions and press OK. Now I can show you the brush tool, which works like this. You have quite a few options here on the right hand side. I decrease the radius to 20 and now I can brush over there and that way I can freely manipulate that geometry. Of course this needs a little practice and you really should think about when you use it. Maybe for landscape modeling this might be an interesting option. Like uh, you can pull stuff around really softly and you can always reduce the strength so it's easier to control what you're doing and that way you can shape several points more freely and without selecting them. There's more hidden underneath, that's the ironing function if you overdid it, if you did too much of uh, extreme um, like modifications, you can iron out what you've done. So this way it's quite edgy and if you change this value to maybe something like this, it's getting softer. Then the magnets tool is kind of good for yeah, like dragging stuff around too. And you can treat it a little like this. This is what Cinema 4D offered before there was sculpting. 
which uh, came to cinema with version 14, as far as I know. Okay, quite nice. Now I would like to show you the most important modeling function there is. It's the extrusions. There are two types of extrusions. Extruding inner works like that. You select the polygon or more than one and hold down left mouse button and that way you can extrude it inwards. Then I switch over to the real, uh, the real extruding which goes up or down. Then you use inwards again. Shortcut is I. Looks like that. And then you can press D or that button again for extruding and you can go down like this. I, D, I, D. That's really the quickest way of creating geometry in my opinion. So what we've left out so far is the beveling. If you would, if you look at that model, um, and especially if you render it, you will see that those edges are incredibly sharp. So if you want to do realistic modeling, you should consider to bevel all kinds of edges. You can do that in, on, in some way in the polygon mode. If I just go to beveling here, I can do something like this. That would be a little bevel or like that. So this is not just some flat piece here. But mostly this is uh, beveling is used with edges. So you would typically use the loop selection here, shortcut is UL, and select all the edges that are interesting for you like those guys here and then you go to beveling and once you drag your mouse to the right hand side you can reduce the sharpness of those edges you can do so numerically by typing in 0.2 here pressing enter and if you render this now you will get some shiny edges running along here you can see they are kind of glowing a little or yeah shiny but at the same time you get some really weird gradients and this always happens when small polygons are placed right next to large polygons you can change this effect by um, changing the fong value that fong angle if you put that down to maybe 20 then you get your stairs back, like one solid color for this polygon and another solid color for this. And if you render now, anything will look fine. And that's exactly what I meant. If you look at the right hand side here, you get reflecting kind of nice edges. And what a real or a good model is all about is um, doing it that kind of effects in the right proportions. So you should, once you've selected another set of edges, like those for example, and you go to beveling mode, you really should have a look at that value and make sure this looks good. You can use it for quite extreme things like that or for rather small changes like so. I would like to do a little more things like that with a cube, converting it again. And if I want to select all the edges, I just hit Command A. And with the beveling, I can do stuff like that quickly. But I can also refine that by using more subdivisions here. And at the moment, those subdivisions are all flat so they don't really 
have a purpose in that situation now, but that changes if I use convex instead of linear. And if you look at those edges from the side, you can tell they are actually round now. And you can use some more subdivisions depending on the distance from that object. Maybe five should do. So to sum it up, the most important, for, at least for architectural modeling, the most important keys are I for inwards, D for extruding, and if I lose UL, and MS for beveling. Like so. Okay, what else can we do? There was that knife, we already had that. Then you can connect points and edges. Dissolve points, that's kind of interesting. Um, I just hit connect points and edges and it's basically connecting all the points I select uh, or edges in that case so if we just select that guy here and that point here and use connect edges then it's doing a cut from one to the other and if I've done something like this by mistake I can just select both of those polygons here and say dissolve. You should make sure before you do stuff like that that those polygons are really in in one plane area so they shouldn't be like um, like this. Let me just um, do a cut. Uh, a line cut from here to there and if you have a situation like this where the edge is kind of lower and I go to point mode again and drag this up so if this polygon is kind of like this you can tell it's not uh, not even then it's a difference if you now dissolve them so you get a flat area now. So you would actually need that cut but if you have a flat situation like this then you can you can just use that function here which is called dissolve. What else have we got? The stitch and sewer didn't use that for quite a while. Um, let's have a look at it anyhow. It should work like this. If you have... I just delete three polygons by just selecting and deleting them. And now let's try how this works. Let's create or select two points. I can read here that I selected two points. If you don't see that and you would like to have that function, you can just go to Shift V and go to HUD and just tick on whatever you need. That in my case is like total points and selected points. But now let's go back to the stitch and sew function. Did it work like that? Yep. So kind of I dragged one point to the other. And I guess I can do the same with uh, only with selected guys, uh, selected points, but let's try. For example, if I had that point here and that point here, I could drag that here. 
but we should be careful with that because what I just did is not really a clean model it's kind of strange you will get a feeling for what's good modeling and what's not I will try to explain to you but uh, usually if you have a proper and working workflow of how to create models then you're not gonna need that many um, modeling operations anymore because it will be just one flow and you shouldn't um, get in the situation of needing those kind of flicking things I don't know maybe in some cases you still need them okay then we have the weld option which is similar I will show you here for example if you have three points you can do any number of points I select three of them then I can hit weld shortcut is MQ and then you basically just have to select one point or the point in between those points which is here and then all the points will snap together there like this there might be some situations for the welding the sliding is another thing where if you have a cut for example right here I just select some edges with the ring selection and cut over it with the MF command with the uh, edge cut I think and I do some cuts and now we have fo the following situation I want to move that edge and of course I could use those arrows here but as you can see then my whole wall gets another shape so I would like to move that within that polygon that's what the sliding is good for I just take it and it's moving along nicely, nicely at those lines So that way, if I would like to do an opening here, I could just select, using the edge mode, select those edges here, cut in there again, and if I wanted to move that edge, I can just use slide points and edges, and this time I will try to use more than one. Excuse me, I pick three of them, use the sliding tool and okay I just see it only works on one edge at a time but it works nicely. Okay. The other other tools in here are Weight hypernerves, that's too advanced, we are not gonna discuss that, but that set point value is incredibly useful if you just want to randomize stuff. Let me show you. We take a grid, which is called plane in Cinema 4D, and imagine you want to have a um, pavement, like where people can walk on, and we just use that here, the plane, convert it, and we can select all the polygons by using the select tool, going to polygon mode, clicking on one polygon, and now we hit command A, so all the polygons are selected, and now we use the extrude inner function, drag our mouse just slightly we get the following problem it is not extruding inwards uh, inwards each single polygon but for the whole shape you can see here it's trying to do that just for uh, the whole thing which is okay in some situations that's what we want 
but in that case I want it for each single polygon and I just want to have it really really slightly so I use a value which is slightly be uh, which should be slightly above zero so maybe 0 0.2 is okay and now I want to select those small polygons which are supposed to be gaps later on so I go to invert you can press UI if you want to be really quick and you could either delete those guys now or move them to another object I will show you how to move them later so we just delete them for now and now you go to invert again so you get your selection back and now the trick is you could extrude all those kind of polygons here to have um, a pavement and you should make sure to create caps because if you don't do so you have holes underneath so I create caps so these are actual uh, like solid pieces but if you look at it in the rendering this looks really really artificial it just looks too perfect you wouldn't find that on a road so I go back um, to the state where I have just those um, flat pieces of geometry I select all the polygons and what I do now is set point values and those, that set point value function is a little misleading at least the name is because what it does is it actually randomizes the position of your points I use crumple in this case let's try it I use a value which has a relation to the size of that um, of that object so I hit apply and this is far too extreme so I would go down maybe just 0.2 and what it does is incredibly useful because it's slightly changing the the way those um, pieces are orientated and then all I have to do is extruding those guys by that value and when I re render this out you can see now I have really the feeling that this is man-made and not perfect now if you would like to improve this result further then you can just select all the edges I select one and go command A and now we can use the bevel function we learned to you know before go close to one edge to see better what we're doing and drag the mouse to the left hand side now next step would go to would be to go to the font tag and use a low font angle let's go back and look at this looks kind of nice maybe I overdid or did uh, too big uh, the gap the, the kind of uh, uh, gaps here but it looks really good now so that's one way of using that randomize function you can also use that for kind of um, yeah pretty much anything you would like to um, randomize like stuff in nature is not perfect so if you have something like this and you want to have it more kind of yeah kind of mixed then just take all the points go to set point value which is the shortcut is ml I uh, use an extreme value go apply and then you have something which is not that regular
Good, then what kind of other functions do we have? Uh, maybe I missed some selection things. Let's just go through that. There is um, growing a selection, which does one more um, one more polygon row around the selection. Shrinking is the opposite. Selecting connected is kind of interesting because once you clicked here and go select connected, you get the whole part. So if I create a gap here, click on that polygon, I can go select connected and it's selecting all polygons that are connected to that uh, first polygon but not to the other. Then there is, um, let's have a look what more. Um, that's kind of interesting here. Okay, we can hide selections and we can convert selection. That's kind of interesting. Uh, converting a selection is when you've selected, for example, polygons. You can click on convert selection and it's asking you if you want to go, f um, if you want to convert all those points that are within the selected area. If you want to select them, just hit convert. Oh, excuse me. From polygons to points and convert. Now they are connected, uh, selected. But the funny thing is, you can actually um, do this far more quickly by just hitting shift while you have selected something in one mode. I just press shift and click on polygons and now I have that selected. So let me show you again. I have a few polygons and I hit sh uh, shift click here and now I have the edges selected. Pretty handy. But now let's go to point mode because we have going on something really weird here because we have floating points here. That's a result of just deleting polygons without deleting its points. And in some cases you might actually use this because maybe you need them, uh, those points later on. I just move them around a bit. And if you want to create new polygons within a given object, you can use that function. Uh, let's just see the difference. This is creating new points and this is creating new polygons. So we need polygons in this case. I click here and it's snapping when it's uh, white. So I can draw a new polygon within that object. Just like that. And if I wanted to create a new point I can do so here with that function. I click on an edge and right where I click I get a new point. And then I can go back to create new polygons and now I just build a new polygon. In some cases you will have loads of that floating points and in case you still, if you don't need them anymore, you should get rid of them. So I select them all and there is a function which is called optimize. Hit U to just see that and there is UO for optimizing. I press O and all those points are gone. If you want to see what optimizing can um, yeah, offer you, you just hit U Shift O and you get that dialog because optimizing doesn't only mean to delete unused points it can also um, melt together overlapping points and it can detect polygons that are double and then delete them. And next I will sh look like to show you the tolerance but let's just clean that or optimize that geometry like this. And now in some cases you might have the following problem. There are two points that are really really close together like um, in this case, maybe. 
and you wanted them to be connected but the model is far too big to always check for doubles or for situations like this where points are really close together so you go to U shift O and then there is a tolerance value which you can use to melt together per points so let's hit OK and those two points are now one if I move it around I can see it now they are connected thanks to optimizing my geometry of course you have to watch out then that you didn't mess up other areas because that optimizing command works on the whole geometry hiding and unhiding is kind of obvious and to be honest I never use it but nevertheless I would like to show you here are some polygons you can hide them they still exist they are not deleted now I can unhide them so I see them again let me select them once more hide the unselected is the opposite and unhiding all brings them back as we are um, just talking about selections I can show you some more for example say you have certain polygons selected and you want to do something based on that selection later on you can um, save that selection by going to select set selection I call this rows for example and now if I do something different for example I choose polygons here or maybe all and extrude them I only have to double click on that selection thing and I get my polygon selection back you can use as many of that selections as you like so you just get more tags for example if I had a few here I could do another selection oh excuse me now I over Written, I have overwritten that one so if I want to have more than one selection I have to make sure I have not um, selected that tag here but maybe some different one I go to select set selection and I have new selection so let me overwrite the new one so I have two different ones I go to set selection and now I have this one, this one, like that. If you like to, you can explore further functions here on how to select, deselect, hide them and so on. And maybe you would like to combine two selections. Maybe you, if you are interested in that, you can find out yourself. Okay, that's uh, what this menu has to offer, but the problem is there is a lot more. And there's two things now we can do. I could show you each and any tool here, but to be honest, I don't think there is one single person in the world that's using each single uh, modeling function because if you have your workflow you will mostly need maybe four or five of them and then you might still know of eight or nine other tools for some special cases but things like that or oh, that was the wrong one things like um, matrix extrude for example are really really fun and nice to play around with but you probably don't need stuff like that too often if, if it maybe you want to use it for old-school grass but you would, wouldn't use that normally let me just go through the others so just in case I missed something Oh 
Oh yeah, I like um, scaling normals. That's kind of interesting. If you have the following situation, we just selected that tips here because we just extruded them. You can see them. I hit S for zooming to the select ones. And now after I modeled them, I want to change their size. This is normally quite difficult, but with the mesh commands, I can go to um, normal scale then that way I can scale the selected polygons by their normal. Let's have a look. I hold down left mouse button and scale them up. Isn't that funny? And in some cases it's even useful. You could uh, now extrude them inwards with I. Then you hit D, extrude them downwards and make sure you remove create caps again. And then I use the scaling function again, which shortcut is M and then the number sign. And now I scale them inwards, so they are inside that geometry, and that's kind of nice. So how do we go on? There was some more nice functions. These are for splines, I think I already discussed them in another tutorial. Oh yeah, aligning normals might be important because after some modeling operations you might end up with following situation. If I select polygons, they are usually orange. And my model is alright because all the polygons on it are orange. But after some modeling operations you might find a situation like this. The normals are reversed and you can tell that they are by their blue color. So if I select all the polygons, I have orange polygons next to blue ones. And in a perfect model, you want to have all the normals of the surface pointing outwards. And the blue polygons have normals that point inwards. So if you want to correct it, you have two um, possibilities or two ways of doing that. Either you select the bad polygons and turn them around by using normals, reverse normals, or you can do that, I just go back, you can do that automatically by letting Cinema 4D analyze the model and you go to normals and then you could just say align normals. This has the advantage that it's doing that automatically for the whole model and wherever there are errors they will probably be corrected just fine. Then we have a axis center. That's a nice function. If you look at this model, then the axis is right there. But maybe you want to put that axis, that's like the middle point of that structure I just created. And you want to have it at the bottom point. So if you see it from the side, this point should be as low as the lowest point of the whole thing. Then you can just go to Mesh, Axis Center. And there are some preset uh, functions, but most useful in my opinion is Axis Center and then you can just move it to the y minus 100 which which is basically the bottom and i can see that with the auto update this is the top point which is just as 
high as that tips. And that's the bottom point. If I want to have it at the far left, then I just, oh, excuse me, then it would be the Z value. And if I want to have it at the left corner, I would move it around here or there, whatever I like. And then I have to say execute and I can close this window. That's very practical. For example, for uh, finding out where or setting the midpoint, I just use 0, 0, 0. But in my case, this was more what I liked. So I hit execute again and I leave that window. And now when I turn the geometry, this is my new rotating point. And this might be also interesting if you have something simple going on, like a box, which is supposed to sit on the ground. Let's use a plane. And at the moment, the cube is right in the middle of my scene, but not uh, standing on the plane. So what do I do? I have coordinates for my box, which are at zero, which would be the floor. So I need to change the axis. And there are two ways of doing that. Once we can use the axis center command again and just place it at zero and th we put this the y value at minus 100 and if we hit execute we will see that this doesn't work at the moment because we didn't convert that cube before. So I just did that and I go to axis center, choose minus 100, hit execute, close it and now I have a new coordinate and if I place it, this at zero then the cube is standing perfectly on the ground. There's a quicker way of moving that axis. I think I showed you before. You just hit enable axis and then you can move around the axis without moving the box. This works especially well in conjunction with the shift key. I hold that down so I get 100 units and I move it again hold down shift after I move the mouse a while and now I just have to make sure to press L again so this is my new pivot point, my new axis. I can use that for scaling as well. Now there's one interesting thing. If you want to lift up that part of our cube, you will have a problem because the whole box is sticking to its top, like that. So if I would like to, um, like, to split it, I have a command here for either disconnecting it or splitting it. And this seems to be kind of the same, but it's not. Let's start off with the disconnecting because it's more simple. If you hit disconnect, then, yeah, in this case, I would like to preserve the groups. It's uh, one polygon only anyway. And I don't get a new object now, but if I move that top part, it's all of a sudden not connected anymore. To, to the rest. So let me just go one step back so it's already um, kind of split up and now I use this command again, access center okay, it does not work in this case 
but I could um, move that 100 units to that side and now rotate it so I can actually open up right after I left the enable access mode um, open up that box like so if I did that without if I had done that without um, using the disconnect command the box would be stretched now at that corner this would be up there but now it works just fine and now let me show you a difference if I want to um, have this side to be an independent object an object which has an own name here and yeah it's, it's kind of separate then I just can use mesh and then I go split which is shortcut UP so if you want to disconnect you just go UD but in this case I want to split it and splitting creates a new object which only contains the polygon you have selected before so if I want to move the whole object now I have the wall kind of uh, duplicated so I could use that for different things and if I don't want to have the old wall to exist if I don't want this anymore I can delete it but not the whole thing but just this one polygon so that way I have them divided let me repeat that because sometimes it's kind of confusing I have a cube I convert it and I select one polygon and I want to be this polygon uh, to be in a new object so I press UP so I got a new object but at the moment the old object is still selected and so is that one polygon so when I now hit delete the polygon is gone on the old object but it has been copied to the new one you can tell by just selecting all polygons from the old object and by selecting all polygons hitting command A at the new object and then you see it has worked we have now an independent object here which I can work on again like this that's incredibly useful if you think about texturing and doing modeling because that way I don't have to take care of the old polygons if I want to have this for some more complex stuff there's no danger of selecting my other geometry by mistake so that's the old one that's the new one okay let me just go through it but I think that was it for introducing the modeling tools I missed out mirroring that's important enough to mention and we could have a look at snapping but I think we already discussed that let me show you modeling which works like this um, excuse me let me show you mirroring it basically works like this if I have a cube and I manipulate one 
part of that cube a little. And once I'm finished with modeling that part, I can mirror it on the other side. Select all the polygons I want to copy and I go to Mesh Create Tools, no, it was among Transform Tools and Mirror It. Then I can use a coordinate system which should be world or object. I use world in this case and I can use that mir this mirror here y and x y x and hit apply. And now I have a copy right on the other side. That's not an interactive copy, that's a one-way operation. And I can um, duplicate points if they are um, right in the middle or I should um, deselect them so they are not double in, in the middle and what I can also do is quite clever I can use the mirroring for use them on screen which is using my pointer um, just my view and it's copying it up there but for that operation you should probably use a rectangular view like right front or top which works far better like so and how do you manage whether it's getting copied in horizontal lines or in vertical lines it's quite easy if you start close to the horizontal line from here you get a horizontal mirroring and if you want a vertical one you should start at a vertical edge like here and this is how it works but what I like even more is that you can select all polygons here and then there is a way of um, copying stuff using mirroring and just clicking when you have the object coordinate system you can use an edge here click there and then you get a copy like this let me just go back I change the mirror plane do that again and now I mirrored it right there where I just clicked really useful okay Okay, um, maybe interesting is the connecting stuff. If you have um, two separate objects and you would like to treat them as one object in future, for example um, the cylinder and the cube, you can select them and you can either go to mesh, conversion, connect objects and delete that means it's deleting the selected objects but puts them into a new object I just click there and I get that one thing here um, this probably didn't work because they were not connected uh, excuse me they were not converted before so I do so now and go to conversion connect objects and delete so now they are treated as one Here you can see that when I go to polygon mode, those polygons belong to this one here and this one. It's all one object now. And if we have those guys here, there's a quicker way of doing that by once they are converted, hitting C. You can right click here and there is connect objects and delete. This works a little quicker. But what is what happens if you just connect the objects you will get a new object. 
which contains the objects you selected before. So now I have like one object, that's the copy of both if you like, and I still have the old objects, my originals if you like. But what can I use current state to object for? This has nothing to do with connecting, it's rather there for if you have a object which is kind of influenced by another. For example, a generator. I give you a quick example. We have a cube which has a deformer applied to it, like a twist deformer. I put it underneath and use it to twist my tower a little. Going to unlimited, I get a screw. And now I want, would like to use that model further, the way it appears, because at the moment I could still change some values, but what I would like to do is convert this to a new object. And in this case, I should select current state to object. That way, I get a copy, which is fully editable and doesn't contain a deformer now. So I delete the original, and this is my new object. The command was current state to object. Okay, I hope I sh I've shown you new stuff. And in the next tutorial, we are probably going to look at a real project on how to use all the stuff we have learned.